Okay, so for those people wishing to try out a new version of Linux, I've decided to come across this one yesterday. It's called Zorin, and apparently it's meant to be a very smooth, very Windows-like experience that will run on computers, and it has a system that is very similar to Windows 7. So let's try. I've already loaded on my memory stick. It's about 1.6 gigabytes, quite a hefty uh, distribution. Some are 10 times less, some are 100 times less. So let's see how quickly and how well it does. So I'm going to plug it in. Remember, of course, now when we're starting up our computer, we want to go into the BIOS menu, the BIOS setup, and that involves pressing one of these F numbers that you see here on the top row. In this case, in my particular computer, it's F2, but for yours, it may be different. You'll see it as you switch on your computer, you may see at the bottom, it'll say FX or F10 or F12, whatever to enter setup so you have to make a note of that it doesn't stay there very long so you have to be quite quick okay so i'm switching on the computer and as it says here press f2 for setup okay all right now as we see here we got our bios menu and we're going to go to boot so i'm going to use the arrow keys to move to boot okay and here we have the normal setup Number one is HDD, blah, blah, blah. that means in normal situation it will start up from your hard disk and it'll load Windows. This is running Windows 7. Now, I want to run the system we just loaded on our memory stick, which is here, number six. So how do I change this? I use the arrow key to go down to that. Okay, and then as it says here, press F6 and F5 to move up, device up or down. So I'm going to use F6. And I'll move it up to top position. What does that mean? It means the first thing the computer is going to do when it starts up is read from the memory stick and not from the hard disk. So it's going to load Zoran rather than Windows. Remember, of course, you're not changing anything in your operating system. You're not getting rid of Windows. You're not deleting any files. You're just trying out a new system. So this is a great way to see if a system works for you. Okay, so we've done everything. So what's it say here? Press F10 to save and exit. Save configurations, yes. Press enter. Okay, now here we go. Like I say, every computer is different, every user is different. So you might have to play around with your, with your distribution to find one you like. Okay, here we go. Very quick. It says here, Zorin OS 8 Core 64 Boot Live System. Yes, that means we're just going to run it from here but we're not going to change anything yeah. now it's loading um, again a very smooth system very similar to windows if you're used to windows windows 7 especially it's not going to be a great shock uh, most of the programs you can find that work for windows will also work here again if you're working for a large organization or you're doing things like video editing it's probably best to stick with the system they suggest or so it either be mac or windows however if you're just the average user or whatever then fine this is a really really good substitute okay and there we go very very quick as you notice it's recognized my wi-fi network trackpad is working Great. Okay, it hasn't changed the time because we're not on the internet yet. So I'm going to, the first thing I do is going to see if I can get on the internet. Again, one of the most important things with any form of Linux is can you get on the internet? If your keyboard's not working, your mouse or trackpad's not working, or the internet is difficult to get work, it makes it a lot more difficult to do any changes. So if you're a kind of timid user, then basically switch it off, pull out your memory stick and choose a different kind. But this one's working fine. Okay, I'm going to put in password. All right, Let's see if that works. Yes, we have a connection. Great. Now, let's give you a quick tour guide. As you can see, it's very similar with the startup button here. You got let's go to the startup menu. These are the different programs, different categories of programs. 
Um, it even starts with Wine. Wine's a very interesting program. It allows you to run Windows programs on a Linux system. Very useful sometimes for things like games or other programs, which are not actually created by Microsoft themselves. Okay, also you have uh, the Software Center. This is where you download your programs. Any updates or any new programs you wish to use, you can do this very simply. Just click on the program you want, for example. Here, what I want to say Office program. It gives you a choice. And all you do is just click on choose it and install it. Very, very simple. Let's see now. How is our. Uh, good, it comes with Google Chrome ready installed. One less thing to worry about. Let's just see if that works out of the box. Yes, it does. So let's just see. Just getting started. Let's see if we can go somewhere. Zoran. See if that finds it. OS8, that's what we're running. Okay, there we go. Perfect. No problem whatsoever. Let's just see if we can see our files. I'm going to go to Home. It's a bit like my computer. And I'm going to go find, we've got see some different hard disks. That's my hard disk. The thing with the Linux system is that you can read your data on the Windows system. So, for example, this you can see here, my contents and settings. So my documents, let's see now my video, see if it runs a video. Yes, good, no problem. Let's go back now, can we see? My music, see perhaps. If we listen to his songs, see if that sound system is working, sound card's working. There we go, that's working. Fine, so basically even from flash memory, you've got yourself a system that's working. And just quickly, how do I switch this off? All right. There we go. Again, you can download other things like VLC if you don't like this particular program. And there you go. I can't, seriously, I couldn't imagine a more, a smoother experience, especially if you've never used this system. And frankly, I've only ever used it once. I, didn't, I went through it once, just before I started this video. And uh, it's great and nice. The only problem is it's, it's 1.6 gigabytes. It's pretty heavy. <clears throat> this is the 64-bit version. So I'm, I'm thinking that it wouldn't work quite so well on older computers, but there is the Zorin 6 distribution, which will run a much lighter version, and I'm going to try that later. If you do decide to install it permanently there, but of course what you should be doing is making sure you've either going to decide how to dual boot it, meaning start it up in Windows and or Linux, or get rid of, you know, get all the data you want off this onto a hard disk, whatever, so you save it. Because if you do install just uh, a Zorin or any other Linux system, only that system, it will get rid of all the data that's there. So if you aren't going to make that decision, make sure there's nothing on the computer that you want to keep that is only there. Okay, let's just switch it off. Okay, shut down. Yes, I do. Now, of course, this was just a live demonstration, meaning nothing's changed as far as your Windows system is concerned. So the minute I switch off the computer and pull out the flash memory, I now have the computer more or less as it was before. The only thing I would say to change back is this. Switch on the computer again. Remember what we said about the BIOS memory F2? Okay. Here we go, pressing F2 again, and we're going to go back to our boot memory, boot setup, 
Here we go, using arrow keys. And notice it's the way we decided beforehand. Uh, look, if you switch on the computer now, it will start, it will low run Windows. It just might be a little bit slow because it's looking for this this uh, hard disk, I meaning the flash memory. It might take a, an extra 10, 20 seconds before it discards that choice and moves on to the next one, which will be, of course, your normal computer. So why, how to avoid that or how to get it back to where it was? It says down here, F9 setup default. So I'm going to press F9. Yes, I do. And I'm going to save and exit, F10. Yes, I'm saving. And now what's happened, your computer is exactly the same as it was beforehand. There's absolutely no changes whatsoever. Even if you forgot that last step, it just means an extra delay of an extra 10 or 15 seconds, whatever, on your computer. And there we go, starting Windows. No problem, very smooth. So if you are a little bit phobic about computers or you're not so sure about this, this is probably the best choice. As long as you've got a reasonably modern-ish computer, I mean, say, three, four years old or less. If you're going back to older computers, then of course I would suggest another system.